In a world where fairy tales collide with ancient debts, Elodie, a dutiful young woman, believes she's about to marry her perfect prince. But destiny has other plans. On her wedding day, she's not led to a grand castle, but to a dark pit. There, she discovers she's not meant to be a princess. After all, she's the sacrificial offering to appease a bloodthirsty dragon. In a distant realm, two sisters named Elodie and Floria reside. They are princesses in a humble kingdom, surrounded by harsh and desolate lands. Recently, a crimson priestess visited their domain and requested Elodie's hand in marriage from Lord Bayford, their father. Lord Bayford consented, although Elodie hesitated initially. Driven by compassion for her starving people, she agreed. Now, the family of four embarks on a journey to Oria, where Elodie is destined to wed the dashing prince, Henry. As Elodie and Henry spend a day getting acquainted, she wonders if her decision to marry this charming prince was wise, as he has already captured her heart. Unlike Floria and Lord Bayford, who eagerly arranged Elodie's marriage to a wealthy prince, their stepmother, Lady Bayford, senses something amiss within Oria's royal family. Her suspicions grow stronger after witnessing her husband's peculiar behavior following a private meeting with Queen Isabel. Despite Lady Bayford's warnings, the wedding proceeds. Post-ceremony, the newlyweds ascend a mountain peak to partake in an ancient ritual explained by Henry as a tribute to their ancestors. At the summit, Elodie glimpses Queen Isabel adorned in the attire of a red priestess. The queen hands Elodie a coin, and they follow her to an altar. There, Queen Isabel recounts the origin tale of the Oria Kingdom. Long ago, their forebears arrived on the island and discovered that a beast also inhabited the land. This beast, driven by savage bloodlust, laid waste to their village. The king rallied his soldiers to seek vengeance for their people, but their efforts ended in failure. Desperate, the beast demanded a grim sacrifice, the king's three cherished daughters. In return, it promised safety for the king's subjects. Objects. Faced with an agonizing choice, his daughter's lives or the lives of many, the king, though devoted to his children, remained steadfast in his duty to protect his people. Thus, a pact was forged as the three daughters met their fate within the beast's belly and the kingdom of Oria was born. During the solemn ceremony, Queen Isabel wielded a small dagger, slicing the palms of both Henry and Elodie. Their mingled blood sealed a sacred pact, granting Elodie royal lineage. To conclude the ritual, Elodie cast the coin she had been given into the chasm. Henry, holding Elodie in bridal embrace, led her toward the exit, supposed back to the palace, but Elodie's expectations shattered when she was mercilessly hurled into the abyss among the gnarled branches at the chasm's base. She discovered remnants of clothing that did not belong to her. Elodie's heart pounded with terror as she realized she was the intended sacrifice. Behind her, a distant fluttering caught her attention, and she turned to see a faint light emanating from a nearby cave. Approaching cautiously, she discovered a bird engulfed in flames. After aiding the bird, Elodie heard a menacing roar, followed by the agonized screeches of other birds ablaze. Desperate, she invoked her late mother's strength. The dragon Dragon, alerted by this plea, fixated on Elodie. She concealed herself, trembling, as the beast spoke of the unmistakable scent of royalty emanating from her. It dawned on Elodie that the dragon detected a blend of her own blood and Henry's, a dangerous combination. The dragon exhaled a fiery breath, and Elodie sprinted to evade the flames. Her scream echoed when she stumbled upon the charred remains of a woman, a haunting figure she recognized from the day she arrived at the palace. Elodie concealed herself, praying the dragon wouldn't find her. Eventually, the creature's sounds faded, allowing her to use an accessory from her gown as a makeshift light. Crawling along a narrow path, she slipped and tumbled to a lower level. There, she encountered a luminous cavern. Weakened, she approached the glowing source but encountered an impassable pit. Summoning her courage, Elodie leaped to the other side. Her dress accessory snagged on stones, granting her a precarious hold. The luminescent formations on the walls revealed themselves as glowworms, and Elodie gathered a handful to illuminate her way. Nearby, she discovered a puddle of water. Thirsty but repulsed by its taste, she stood beneath the dripping ice shards, catching precious droplets. Suddenly, the ice melted, and Elodie leaped away just in time to avoid the dragon's fiery assault. She sprinted down a narrow passage, beyond the beast's reach. Elodie stumbled upon more discarded garments, and etched onto the cavern walls were the names of countless women who had met the same grim fate before her. The weight of their collective sacrifice pressed upon Elodie, leaving her desolate. She inspected the sizable wound on her leg and rested briefly. Yet, her slumber was restless, haunted by visions of the other women enduring circumstances similar to hers. Among them, Victoria's gaze bore into Elodie, and her faint words echoed. Everything was a lie. Startled awake, Elodie's panic surged as she noticed glowworms adhering to her injured leg. But to her astonishment, these luminescent creatures were healing her wound. Elodie humbly apologized for underestimating their power. Determined, she studied the map sketched on the wall and pressed onward. Ahead lay a chamber with three diverging paths. Elodie opted for the middle fork, mirroring what she had seen on the map. Soon, musical notes reached her ears, and she encountered crystal informations, a sign that the exit drew near. A glimmering crown, engraved with the letter V, lay discarded on the ground. Elodie rejoiced, believing it belonged to Victoria, who had evidently escaped. However, her assumption crumbled when she realized the exit was merely an opening high in the mountain, a perilous choice between death by fire or consumption. As distant figures approached, Elodie screamed, desperate for rescue, but her cries fell on deaf ears, except for one. The dragon, alerted, fixated on her. 
Trembling, Elodie retreated, only to discover the remains of another unfortunate soul, likely Victoria. As the dragon prepared to unleash its fiery wrath, the desperate cries of men echoed through the cavern. Elodie retraced her steps, following their urgent voices until she entered a vast chamber. There, she confronted a grim sight, the remains of three baby dragons. The revelation shattered the tale spun by Queen Isabel. The truth emerged. The king had unprovokedly attacked the dragon's lair, slaying its innocent offspring. In retaliation, the dragon decimated the king's army, but mere death was insufficient punishment for the malevolent monarch. The dragon sought to inflict upon him a suffering more profound than its own. Elodie's ears caught another voice, and she swiftly concealed herself, aware that the dragon would detect the approaching men. And indeed, it did. The beast mercilessly dispatched most of the search party. Then, it confronted Lord Bayford, who had initiated the rescue mission for his daughter. Lord Bayford, sword drawn, courageously confronted the creature, but fate intervened. The dragon yanked him upward, his blade falling and impaling the ground. Realizing that the man before her was Elodie's father, the dragon commanded him to summon his daughter. Lord Bayford's voice trembled as he confessed. He had known, even before the wedding, that Elodie would be the sacrifice. Driven by the promise of immense gold, he had allowed it to happen, believing he acted for the greater good of his people. Now, he regretted that fateful choice. The dragon, weary of his theatrics, thrust him to the ground, granting him a final opportunity to call Elodie. But Lord Bayford defied the order, instead shouting for his daughter to remain hidden. Enraged, the dragon's claws sank into him. Meanwhile, one of Lord Bayford's men, concealed nearby, slipped inadvertently, diverting the dragon's attention. In that fleeting moment, Elodie seized her chance. She whispered her farewell to her father and fled, escaping the dragon's wrath. The dragon burst out of its lair, flames licking the air in a display of rage. The queen, witnessing this fury, realized that the escaped sacrifice was the cause. She hurried to the ship where Floria and Lady Bayford stood. Capturing Floria, she intended to offer her to the dragon. Lady Bayford, despite her wound, pressed on toward the mountain to rescue Floria. Elodie, Lady Bayford's stepdaughter, urged her to stay while she herself returned to the mountain. The queen even considered cutting Henry's hand to mix his blood with Floria's, but he refused, arguing that Floria was too young for such a fate. Undeterred, the queen mixed her own blood with Floria's, and the guards cast her into a cave. Elodie arrived at the sacrificial site, but it was too late. Her sister was already deep within the cave. Undeterred, Elodie descended into the chasm, collecting glowworms to heal her wounds and save some for her sister. She improvised a booby trap using her hair and then seized her father's sword. Meanwhile, the dragon guarded Floria, waiting for Elodie's return. When Elodie's trap sounded, the dragon investigated. Elodie seized the opportunity, pointing the sword at the dragon's eye. The dragon scoffed, claiming the sword wouldn't kill it, only anger it. But Elodie had no intention of killing the dragon. She knew it was just as misguided as she was. Elodie attempted to convey the truth to the dragon. The girls she had been slaying were not the king's daughters who had harmed his baby dragons. Instead, they were random daughters from a different kingdom. Despite Elodie's efforts to explain. The dragon grew angrier and adamantly rejected her words. It unleashed a fiery attack that struck Elodie. Fortunately, water lay nearby, and she resurfaced, sprinting toward the sword she had accidentally dropped. However, the dragon pinned her to the ground, its talons digging into her. Elodie retaliated by stabbing the dragon's A, causing it to fling her away in pain. Remarkably, she landed right next to the sword she had plunged into the dragon's chest. Elodie cried out that she was not part of the royal family, but the dragon remained unconvinced due to the lingering scent of Henry's blood. Undeterred, Elodie stabbed the dragon's hand, which held her captive, and was hurled away once more. As the dragon limped behind her, Elodie made her way to a nearby pillar. Provoking the beast, she goaded it into releasing another fire attack. However, thanks to a rock formation shielding her, the flames rebounded toward the dragon. Weak and wounded, the dragon lay on the ground. Seizing the opportunity, Elodie revealed the truth. She was not of royal lineage but had been manipulated by the royal family. The dragon, now more receptive, allowed Elodie to use glowworms to heal its injuries. Determined, Elodie returned to the palace, intent on disrupting the third wedding and preventing the evil royals from sacrificing yet another innocent woman. Henry profusely apologized upon seeing Elodie, attempting to justify his actions as if he hadn't just married two women and sacrificed them by hurling them into the chasm. Elodie swiftly interrupted him. She had no intention of listening to his lame excuses. She then gently cupped the bride's cheek, urging her to flee with her family immediately. Elodie extended one last opportunity to the remaining attendees, escape or face the consequences. Some fled in fear, while others remained, bewildered or disbelieving. Queen Isabel seethed with anger, refusing to show fear to Elodie. But Elodie calmly assured the queen that she wasn't the one they should dread. With a determined gaze, she declared, Fear not me, but what follows? As if on cue, the dragon materialized, prompting some of the lingering attendees to flee. The dragon bided its time as Elodie turned to leave the palace. Then, in a fiery burst, it eliminated the remaining royal bloodline, the king's kin. Elodie strutted across the bridge, the dragon soaring above her, while the palace crumbled and burned behind them. Once she had recovered, Elodie, Floria, and Lady Bayford boarded their ship, homeward bound alongside their newfound draconic companion. This is it for today. I will reconnect with you with another story like this. Until then, this is your host for Movie, Recap Vision, signing off. Don't forget to subscribe and enable notifications to catch more videos like this. Thank you for watching.